I'm Dr. Katie. I'm one of the pediatricians at Post Pediatrics. Um, and I am happy to be asked to join for Women's Wellness Wednesday, which always trips me up too many W's. Um, and, you know, it sounds like normally these events are in person, maybe drinking wine. Um, instead, I'm talking to an iPad and talking to you guys this way because of coronavirus. So, um, I, when I first originally got asked to talk to you guys, we were talking a little bit about back to school. Um, and at the time, that was not something that was a decision that was made. And there was lots of families coming to me every day talking about, you know, what decision was going to be right for their family. Were they going to virtually school? Were they going to be back in school? Um, you know, what, what was going to work for their career and their individual kids and everything else. And so that was a conversation I was having every single day in the office many, many times. Um, this, you know, shortly after we started talking about that, a bunch of school districts locally started making those decisions for families. Um, and so we have a bunch of different places going back in really different ways. We have people fully back in person. We have people fully back virtually like they are in Pullman. Um, and we have in Moscow and some other surrounding places going back kind of part-time, half and half, hybrid models or not even back yet at all. So the discussion has changed a little bit over time now that families are already sort of thrown back into this and are dealing with a kind of new normal for the school year this year. So I wanted to talk about some ways to keep your family, your kids, yourself, um, healthy this school year. Um, so I have, my, I have my list of notes here because I am also a completely imperfect human who worked on this last night to try to figure out what I was going to talk about. Um, so I have basically, I kind of have 10 things that I think I came up with that I, are most important in keeping your family healthy this year and getting back to school, having talked to a lot of families about this. Um, the first thing, and I think most important in reframing all of this, is this is 2020. It is not 2019. It is not any previous school year, and it's really different. Um, this has been a really kind of weird, unsettling year for lots of families. Um, and so I think really importantly, you know, going into all these points I'm going to talk about is that your expectations this year are going to need to be different and they may need to be lower in some areas um, in order to preserve your sanity and preserve your kids' sanity. Um, I think adjusting those, those expectations allows you to um, lose a little bit of the mom guilt or parent guilt about things not being perfect. Everybody is, like I said, everybody is imperfect and making lots of hard decisions every single day. And so set that bar a little bit lower, set the expectations a little bit differently this year, and I think everything will go a little smoother. Um, number two, and this is a big one, this is a big one that I see in the office all the time, is your attitude as a parent is really gonna set the tone for your kids for this year. Um, you know, I noticed this first when everybody started masking. We were talking about masking in kids, we were talking about masking in adults, we were talking about masking in schools. We asked families to wear masks in our office. Um, and what I was seeing was the kids that were doing a really great job with this were the ones whose parents were modeling it and who were talking about it in a positive manner. Um, when families started talking about it in a negative manner or talking about how it was hard or it was impossible for children to wear a mask, those kids were actually, you know, worse at wearing masks than the ones who I saw parents talking positive about it. The same goes for how you talk about school and how the school year is going to go in front of your children. Um, you know, if you are, if you are going into this thinking this is not going to work, this, you know, how are my kids going to school virtually? I mean, trust me, I've had all of those thoughts, but if you're saying those thoughts out loud in front of your children, they are very impressionable. Kids are still learning about their world and they are very good mimics of our words and actions and emotions and everything else. Um, so making sure that what you are saying out loud in front of them is setting them up for a positive attitude for this that being said, 
I do think it's really important that you find your safe space or your safe people as a parent where you can vent and grieve losses and talk about how you know some of these experiences feel really negative or sad or distressing this year so that you can get that out um, but just you know not particularly to your children or in front of your children um, third I think accepting what your limitations are as a as a parent and as a you know in your job and in schooling your children and making sure that you ask for help from the right people um, whether that's your child's pediatrician or their teacher or your friends or your parent or your child's grandparent um, but reaching out for help when you know that you have some limitations that are you're facing um, number four is when you start setting up you know particularly if you're doing some school from home if you're on a virtual schooling kind of option or you are doing a hybrid option making sure that you're providing some amount of routine or structure for your kids so that they have a way to kind of wrap their brains around what's expected of them how to organize their day this can look really different it does not have to be a really strict routine um, but something so that they know what you know what's next and what's expected of them I've seen families do this a million different ways from whiteboards to printed out calendars to short lists of assignments that are due that morning or that day um, to Alexa reminders that go off at certain times to tell them to do things um, you know that being said being flexible because zoom meetings are going to crash and your work meeting is going to get interrupted and um, things are going to go awry or there's going to be opportunities for something fun that come up and so i think being flexible with that routine is good too um, number five i have is knowing your child's own kind of medical emotional academic needs and knowing who the right people are to talk to the, talk to you about in order to make sure your kids are still getting those needs met this year because it is a wonky weird year um, kids 504 plans and IEPs and everything at school are getting met in slightly different ways and so making sure that you're communicating with those people um, and that team of people that you have around your child to help make sure those needs are continuing to be met even if in slightly different ways um, number six creating a comfortable kind of distraction free space for your kid at home this does not need to be fancy my coping mechanism in this was that I like decorated ours really cute and we did this whole thing you do not need to do that it does not need to be decorated cute um, but it does need to have some sort of a space where they are able to set up their computer they have you know a charger nearby they have a couple supplies and things that they need to go to quickly like a pencil and their journal and whatnot um, whether that space is separate from yours or is close by yours so you can be on hand to help um, whether that space is at their child care center if they're helping support that but making sure that they have a space that they can be where they feel comfortable learning um, this next one keeps coming up this has come up a lot recently it's something I talk about with teenagers but is not something I've had to talk about a lot with little kids in the past but I think this year is sort of forcing this discussion on us is having a talk with your kids about internet and media safety um, this doesn't just mean safety but kind of just a general internet discussion on you know where where do we click what is um, where do you find trusted information knowing that not everything you read online is true uh, things like cyberbullying uh, zoom bombings in Pullman brought up the issue of porn or sex or things that you can find on the internet that are not appropriate or that might frighten or scare your child um, and so having those discussions in kind of an age-appropriate manner um, you know targeting that at what age your kid is there's some really good stuff on there's a website called common sense media that I really like to refer people to that um, has some really good stuff on internet safety that you can go, go through with your kids um, number eight continuing to encourage social connections for your kids this is a big one too over this last six or seven months 
Um, your kids have lost a lot of their normal social connections, going to school, sitting in a classroom, connecting with teachers, PE teachers, music teachers, school counselor, their friends. Um, you know, they're often not in their same sports or activities or things that they were doing. And so some of them are grieving a little bit of that sense of connection to their friends and their support network. So finding ways to help them, A, um, you know, connect in other ways, whether that is virtually or a socially distanced outside kind of play date or whatever that, whatever feels comfortable, but allowing them to maintain some of those social connections. Um, also maintaining social connections within your family. I think that it, you know, some people have said, well, what do you mean we've been together for seven months? We, we are crammed in a house together. Um, but I think maintaining some of those in individual social connections, having one-on-one -on -one time with, you know, your spouse or having one-on-one -on -one time with each of your children, um, allowing them to ha have time away from each other um, in and of itself is helping maintain those individual social connections. So I think all of those things are really important. And I think there's a lot of good, you know, creative ways that people are coming up with to do that. Number nine, and this is like really, really getting back to the basics, is all these things being said, you know, there's lots of things that people are doing to get their kids ready for back to school. Some of them are much more structured or creative or fancy than others, but really kids need really basic things. They need your love and connection. They need support. They need someone to talk to. They need like fed and watered like plants um, and they need sleep and so these are really basic things that most parents already have you know done very well over the years you know, they their kids get sleep and their kids get fed and and their kids get loved and those are normal things that you can that you do every year that your kids still need this year and so then it brings me to number 10 which is also very important and not any less important than any of the other things is that you need to take care of yourself. Um, you know, airlines have said this for 500 million years that you need to put your own oxygen mask on before you put it on your child or the person sitting next to you. And that is really true this year as much as any other year is that taking care of yourself and making sure that your emotional state and everything else is, is, is okay and that you are setting good examples of self-care, whether that is getting a minute to yourself, going on a walk, um, asking for help when you need it, getting exercise. I mean, that means different things to everybody, but making sure that you are really um, taking care of you before trying to take care of everyone else around you will be really important throughout the rest of this really weird year. Um, so those are the big things that I came up with. There's 500 million other things and important and most importantly those things you know as those questions come up you just remember that you have lots of people around you that are willing to help. Um, your child's pediatrician, your child's teacher, I just encourage you to really communicate, communicate, communicate over and over this year um, when you have questions or need help because there's lots of people willing to help.